Welcome to VBlog 47 Business Math. This is 135 Fun with Math and Excel. Chapter 8. We're talking about simple interest. And now we're going to talk about the simple discount note. What in the world is this? I have it in plain English here and then the terms like that the, the textbook uses down here. Let me adjust my screen here so we can try and understand this strange concept called discount note, simple discount note. The idea of a simple discount note is you go to the bank and ask to borrow, hey, can I borrow a thousand bucks? And the bank says, oh, yeah, sure. But we'll only give you $900 today, and then you have to pay us back $1,000 in one year. You're like, what? Why only 900 bucks if I have to pay back a thousand? And the bank says, we are going to collect the $100 interest up front. This is called a simple discount note. Here's what happens over here. They say on the note, it'll say face value, $1,000. Also, by the way, the face value is going to be maturity value also because they take out the interest rates. This is the amount you're going to pay back on the due date. But on the, the note, it says face value 1000 and the discount rate, discount rate, what in the world is that? Let's see what um, the interest is what most people call it, but when you do a discount note like this, it's called discount. So, but this is really interest, and when we get to the interest rate, it's going to be called discount rate. But it's all just interest. So here it is. The the contract says thousand bucks, and the interest rate here would be ten uh, percent. That's what it says. And then you go ahead and calculate your one hundred dollars, and you got to subtract it. So there it is. You got to pay that back, but they just right off the bat they subtract one hundred dollars and they keep that as interest. They give you the nine hundred dollars. <throat> you take that and use it for whatever you're using your loan for the nine hundred bucks, and then later you pay a thousand. That's a simple discount note. By the way, the trick to this whole thing is right. <clears throat> if we were to calculate the interest rate, we go a hundred divided by a thousand, and that's ten percent. But the way it says, the way a simple discount note is uh, worded, it says a face value of 1,000 and the discount rate will be 10%. It seems like it's 10%, but it's not. If you were to compare, because you only took $900 home. So if you compare what your interest divided by that, it would actually be 1.11% or 11 and 19%. That's called the effective interest rate. So that's how the banks can structure these discount notes and if you're not paying attention, you just go, oh, yeah, 10%, but it's really not 10%. Here's the words that the textbook used, simple discount notes or interest in advance notes. The bank collects the interest in advance. The borrower pays the full face value back on the due date. In our example, it was 1000 The borrower receives the face value minus the interest on the day that the funds are dispersed, interest or discount. So, uh Whatever the face value minus the discount, in our case, 1000 minus 100, 900 bucks. Oh, man, we only get 900 The amount the borrower receives is called proceeds. Yeah, this is called proceeds. The interest in advance is called bank discount or discount. All right, let's see how this works. Now, I have a bunch of formulas over here, and you can look up at the top. You can click pause and see the comparison from simple interest to discount. But we're going to go straight to our example. I have the formulas down here, by the way. Uh, example one, if you take out a loan with a maturity value, face value, of $2,000 and the bank discount is $150, what are the proceeds? So you, you're saying, can I borrow $2,000? And they go, they say, sure, but we're going to give you less than $2,000. So here's our variables. Face value and market value is $2,000. The bank discount, $150. Here's our formula for proceeds. Proceeds equals the face value maturity value minus the bank discount. And the variable letters they use in the textbook are P equals M for the maturity. Proceeds equals M minus B. B is for bank discount. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's do it right in the little cells there. Um, the, let's put our maturity value in first. Equals 2,000. Tab, tab. Equals the 1,500. And now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do equals the per, the face value, maturity value, or M, 
minus the bank discount, or B. Enter. So you really only get to take 1,850 home. So we have to pay back 2,000. And you are going to give us only 1,850. Uh oh, wait a second. Did I put that there? Is it? Did I really type that there? That's silly. No, no. It really should say something like that. If the face value or maturity value is 2,000 and the bank discount is 150, the pro our proceeds are 1,850. But I really like this other one here, ready. Better. Oh. We have to pay back 2000 You're only going to give us 1850 All right, so I have a little trickery there. Sorry about that. Let's look at our next example. This is a more comprehensive example where we'll have to calculate the actual bank discount amount. Here it is. Cynthia Thomas signs an 8500 nine-month note. If the bank discount, the bank discounts the note at 9%, Find the amount of the discount and proceeds. Here's our variable, 8,500 for maturity value. Time, time, where does it say? Oh, nine months, so time is nine months. Discount rate, our interest rate is 9%. And months in year, 12. Here's our formula for bank discount. Face value times discount rate times time. Hey, it's, it kind of sounds like our simple interest rate, right? Face value, but in this case, it's bank, they have different variables. If they'd only just stuck to the same ones we used before, but they used different ones. Bank discount equals face value or maturity value times discount rate equals time. And the variables they use in the book are B equals M times D times T. So let's calculate our bank discount first. And then we'll unfortunately subtract, and in poor Cynthia, we'll get less than 8500 So we're going to use round because this is dollar and cents, and we're going to use it in a subsequent calculation. So equals R-O-U-N-D, open parentheses. We have M for face value or maturity value times our discount rate, 9%. Times and we have time in months. So we got to take our 9 divided by 12. That's our fraction of a year. And then comma 2, close parentheses. So there it is. Round all that to the penny. Wow. We're going to go and buy, borrow 8500 for nine months, and they're just going to flat out take $573.75 right off the bat. So our proceeds would be equals the 8500 minus that big chunk of interest. After we subtract the bank discount of $573.75 from the face value of $8,500, pro our proceeds were $7,926.25. All right, so that's a little bit about discounting. Let's look at a variation on this. Find the maturity value. Now, here's the deal. If you're going, let's just think about this. If you're going to the bank and you're thinking, I want, I need 8,500, you know, and they only give you seven, nine, two, six, and 25 cents, you know, that's not enough. So here's the formula to calculate exactly what the face value or maturity value should be. Right, there it is. And in the PDFs, in the textbook, they, they show you a little bit how this form is derived. Um, but we're just going to use it here. And here's our example. And, uh, well, actually, let's look up here. Maturity value equals proceeds divided by 1 minus the discount rate times time. Here's our example. Mike needs 4000 bucks to buy a machine. So this is a perfect example, right? He needs the 4000 So he can't go and just get the proceeds less than 4000 Find the amount he needs to borrow, maturity value, if he plans to repay the note in 80, 180 days and the bank charges 12% discount rate. Here are our variables. Proceeds, 4000 So that's what we want to get. And discount rate, do I have, that's not, this is, um, So the thing we need to get 
uh, Mike needs to get is the four thousand dollars. He needs to walk home with that four thousand bucks. Interest rate twelve percent. Time in days one hundred and eighty three sixty in a year. Let's go ahead and use our formula here. Proceeds divided by, in parentheses, 1 minus discount rate times time. Let's go ahead and see if we can calculate this. Equals the proceeds divided by, open parentheses, 1 minus the 12% times the time, 180 days, divided by 360. Close parentheses. And there it is, 4,255 and 32 cents. So it must say that amount maturity value or face value on the contract in order for him to walk away with that amount. If Mike needs, if Mike needs $4,000 to buy a machine, proceeds, and the bank is offering him a note, do in 180 days in the bank discount rate of 12%, the face value and maturity value would have to be 4,255 and 32 cents. Hey, um, we could check this equals this times one minus, and we'd have to do the rate and time, the rate times the time. And we got our fingers crossed, it better be 4,000. Oh, look at that. We can even c copy that. I'm going to copy that out of there. Tab, make a space, because if I don't, it won't do that. So that was that. And this is a check. I went ahead and checked to see if that worked. Hey, we have one last topic here, and we already uh, talked about this, the effective interest rate. And... Um, we're going to look at the effective interest rate between a simple uh, interest note and a discount note. And we already talked about this earlier. The, the banker really, when it says 10% on it for a discount note, that's not the effective rate because you're not taking home the face amount. So let's just do a calculation here. Um, for our simple interest note, we're going to compare the interest, and then we're going to divide it by the principal, and that's 7,500 in both of these examples, and notice the interest is going to be the same in both of these examples, times our time, 90 divided by 360, close parentheses, enter, ooh, 12%. Now let's do the simple discount, and the essence here is going to be, here we compare the 225 to the 7,500. Here it's going to be the same 2,500, but remember, we're not taking home that much. We're only taking home that much, so that's smaller. So it'll make it a bigger interest rate. Equals the 225, that's the interest divided by, oh, there it is, the less than this number. That's what's going to cause this thing to be larger, times the time, which is the same as before. Close parentheses. And the, it says right here, we, wh why? Because you paid the same amount of interest but received fewer initial funds. And if you scroll over, there's the, the variables for, for that formula right there. All right, in this one, there's no homework template. You're welcome to copy any of this you want and paste it into a workbook or not. And then the answers, of course, are always at the end. All right, see you next chapter for compound interest.